what you are about to listen to is me, Pastor Michael Bowman, as I think out loud about and try to apply the scripture to anything and everything that comes to mind. This usually happens in my car. So jump in and let's talk. I've been thinking a lot lately about how two people can experience almost the exact same thing and yet come out on the other side with a totally different view of things. For one person, their circumstances and experience can be hell to them. And for another, it can be uh, heaven. And when I say that, I don't, I don't mean that you know the, the most wicked of things that could happen to you is gonna feel good or you're gonna be like excited about it or something like that. All I mean is how you look at it, um, how, your, your attitude about it. Um, you see this, for instance, even in the scripture. Uh, there are plenty of circumstances that you find the apostles in, in the book of Acts, that are horrible, and yet, in the midst of them, they have the mind of Christ. So they sit in a jail cell, and what do they do? They sing hymns. They sing hymns and, and psalms. They sing to the glory of God in a jail cell. Uh, Paul says that he learned the secret of contentment, and that it's that in Christ he can do all things. That he can have joy in all circumstances. All circumstances. I've been thinking about this in terms of my own life or or others that I know, and how you know there are similar circumstances that uh, different people can go through, and uh, they can come out the other side, even if it was difficult, if it was hard, and be full of gratitude to God, find a blessing in it, even if it was, even if they suffered, they can find some kind of blessing from God in it. Uh, or they can find that, you know, it taught them how to rely upon the goodness of God more. And there are others who can come through the same circumstances and be bitter and resentful and angry. I've probably been thinking about this because I've read a lot of C.S. Lewis in the past year, and especially thinking about Till We Have Faces and The Great Divorce. At the beginning of The Great Divorce, C.S. Lewis has in the preface where something where he talks about how, um, this is my paraphrase, this is not exactly right, uh, but he says something like people are like trees, and uh, with trees, as they grow, they become more like what they are and what they're supposed to be. Um, and, and people are like that. And so his, his point there, and then using the narrative of the great divorce to illustrate this idea, is that uh, for those who are destined to hell, in a sense they're already there, and they're just going to keep growing into it. Uh, for those who are in going to end up in heaven, in the new heavens and new earth, well now you're already a part of that. You're already in it. And so everything is colored by that reality, by that final end. Your telos, your end, your goal, your purpose, um, where, where everything will come to its ultimate fulfillment, that already colors the way things are now. Now, you can't be a, you know, a, a fatalist about this because then at any moment you could say, well, right now I'm resentful, therefore I am you know, not of the elect or something like that. That would be silly. That would be going way too far with this idea. 
but as a general idea about how we look at the world, how we think about the world, um, how we think about our experiences. When you think about how the worst of tragedies will be subsumed by the total and complete glory of God if you are in Christ. And how that reality, that end time, uh, that, that new heavens and new earth, when all things have been fully consummated, that that is already present with you, that you are already seated with Christ in the heavenly places, that his spirit dwells in you. And if his spirit dwells in you, then it, it because God is, because God is not bound by time as we are, the spirit of God can apply the past work of Christ to us in this very present moment. And he can also bring the reality of future glory uh, more present to us even right now. We are united to Christ, and Christ is. Uh, Christ is seated on the throne, and we are seated with him through that union. This helps you see, too, I think, how you can experience tragedy and sorrow and yet maintain trust and faith. I was thinking about this, too, the other day. I'm part of a book club, and we read a book called Two Who Survived about a couple uh, who both made it through the Holocaust and then met after the fact and were married. And it's not from a Christian perspective. And the, the woman who is a, kind of the primary character, she lost the faith she did have. She did not have a Christian faith, but, but what faith she did have, what belief in a God she did have, she lost after this event. Now you take that and you see it as in some ways understandable. You, you see how such a tragic and horrible, wicked thing as the Holocaust might cause somebody to question what they believe. But then bring in someone like Corey Ten Boom or her sister Betsy. What did it do for their faith? It did not change it. If anything, you would say, having read their work, it strengthened their faith. So how can that be? I mean, obviously, the, the one is that Corey Ten Boom had a true faith and a true, you know, the true God. But even beyond that, you can see this idea illustrated that two people can experience the exact same thing and see it totally different. And it's all based on whether or not they have faith, whether or not they have a changed heart, whether or not they have the mind of Christ. What this does, I think, is help us to learn the secret of contentment, that in Christ we can do all things. Even the most difficult tragedy and the worst of suffering and sorrow that you will experience in this life, if you are in Christ, then even that is just a momentary affliction that in the grand scheme of things will not matter. And if you get bogged down in that, and if you allow that to dictate how you're going to think about God and how you are going to uh, think about the, the rest of life, how, how you are now going to live, then you are walking a very dangerous road. But if you take what happens and you say the Lord gives, the Lord takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord. If you have that mind of Christ, that you can be content, uh, even joyful, you can rejoice in every circumstance. Rejoice always. I will say it again, rejoice. You can only do that if 
you understand your telos, where you're heading. And you only understand that if you know Christ. But it helps you then to live in the midst of painful circumstances in such a way that you know this is not the end. You know that these circumstances do not dictate everything. You know that these circumstances are not ultimate, but Christ is. Hey guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has been, go ahead and rate it, review it, or share it with a friend, especially if you're in La Crosse, Wisconsin, or the surrounding areas. That helps me expand the audience and hopefully increase the impact of these ideas. If you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns on anything that I just talked about, you can reach me at Pastor Michael J. Bowman at gmail.com. You can find more content from me, as well as information about the church that I pastor at ccc-pca.org. With that, I hope you can enjoy the many blessings of God today. Until next time.